Hello everyone, I'm CJ Adrian and welcome back to my Viking vlog. So for today's topic, I'm going to talk about something that came up in conversation a couple of days ago with a friend of mine. They asked about the Vikings. I didn't bring it up in the conversation, surprisingly, they did. But they wanted to know if, out of all the examples of Viking raids on monasteries, if monks ever fought back against the Vikings. And as it turns out, there is a wonderful example that's steeped in my own research uh, that shows that, in fact, they did. Now, there are a couple of different isolated incidents where uh, ecclesiastical centers tried to fortify, hire, hire uh, mercenary armies and so forth to fight back against the Vikings. But the best example of how that looked uh, in the process that led to it is the island of Dangoutier, specifically the monastery of Saint-Philbert on uh, what is today the island of Dangoutier. Now, the reasons for how the idea for fortifications and defending themselves developed has a lot to do with the specific conditions that were going on on the island during the early Viking Age. Uh, I've talked about before how sporadic raids were hit and run operations. So Lindisfarne, for example, they came in, raided, took what they wanted, um, and they didn't necessarily come back with at Lindisfarne in particular. They it looks like a, a one and done kind of deal. Uh, Iona on the other side of the British Isles um, was attacked a, a couple of different times, but fairly sporadically without any uh, regularity. On the other hand, the monastery of saint philbert on the island of Normandie, which is on the west coast of France, it's like I like to describe it, it's in southern Brittany. So Brittany is the peninsula that reaches out into the ocean uh, and uh, down in what they call the Empire de France, uh, where the Loire comes out um, into uh, the Bay of Biscay. Uh, there's the island of Dongmiti. So it's pretty far, it's pretty remote. Uh, it was a long way to travel for Vikings, and yet they appear to have attacked that area over and over and over again with regular frequency. And we know this in part because the abbot of the monastery of saint Philbert, a man named Arnulf, or Arnulf, uh, wrote a letter in 819 to the archbishopric complaining of frequent and regular raids that eventually forced the monks to start abandoning the island during the summer, the raiding season. So they would go to a, a satellite priory uh, called, um, or on the on the, the Lake de Grandlieu, so it's a lake that's on the continent, uh, and they have saint Philbert de Grandlieu, which was a satellite priory of theirs. Back then it was called Deas. Uh, so they got a, they got permission from the archdiocese to to move their entire operation to this this satellite priory during the summer, and then they would go back to uh, the island of Nomuti in the winter when the danger of Viking raids had passed. This persisted for over a decade because uh, the letter from Alnuf was written in 819, so they'd already been raided at regular inter intervals leading up to 819. It was in 823 that they got the charter from, uh, actually from uh, the Carolingians to be able to move to, to move to, to uh, Deas. <clears throat> so starting in 823, they would abandon the island and then um, do a pilgrimage back during the winter. Uh, and then in 830, they got special permission again from the Carolingians. And it's interesting that they were getting these permissions from the Carolingians, right? We often think of the Carolingian Empire of being a wholly separate entity from the church. The church had its own operation. It had a great deal of its own autonomy, its own land holdings, and so forth. Uh, but the charters that were written to allow the monks to fortify, um, and that's what they asked for. They asked to be able to fortify the monastery. Uh, the charters that they received were directly from the Carolingians, uh, so it shows that there was heavy involvement from uh, local government as well as the church to try and solve this problem of the frequent raids uh, on the island of Nomiti. So in 830, they received permission to build what uh, in the documents is called a castrum. It's a Latin word. It's basically a, a small wooden fortification. Um, and uh, ostensibly, they did so around the monastery. The castrum uh, was finished probably around 833. And then the first big battle or first test of whether this thing was going to work uh, was pretty much immediately after it was finished in 834, uh, the monk Ermentarius, who wrote about some of the, uh, the raids on the, on the monastery of saint Philbert, wrote about, or he supposedly was a witness to a battle um, between the Vikings and a garrison of Frankish forces that were in the castrum on the island. And it's an interesting story because uh, 
so Ermentarius relates to us the Count of Nantes. So he's the uh, basically the regional lord, um, which uh, uh, he, so he essentially had vested interest in the island because it's part of La Garnache, which was his his land holding. Um, he left the main city to travel to the island specifically to defend against the Vikings. Now, the idea that he was able to go there and actually meet the Vikings in battle tells us tells us two things. Number number one, the raids were so frequent and regular, they knew when to be there to fight them off. Uh, and then the other thing too is uh, it shows a heavy vested interest in the island um, as a as a as a resource uh, to be able to, and then to reclaim it essentially from the damage that was done by the regular Viking raids. So it's all uh, an interesting uh, setup. Uh, so then in 834, um, the Count of Nantes with his garrison of Frankish soldiers were able to repel a fleet of, of invading Vikings. Uh, and after that, they celebrated victory, they went home. And what they didn't anticipate was that Another fleet came in in September and actually took the castrum, at which point the island was definitively lost. Uh, and so around 836, then the monks from uh, Saint-Philbert remained year-round at Dias on the, on the um, Grand Lieu Lake and never went back to the island. At that point, historians think, and this is all conjecture, that the island became a base for the Vikings to launch further raids up the Loire River Valley, down into the Gallon where Bordeaux is, uh, and also into Spain. So, uh, but at the end of the at the end of this lovely story, uh, what it shows is there was an effort. There was an effort uh, on. In, on multiple fronts to try and repel the Vikings. So the while the monks themselves, we don't know if they took up arms against the Vikings or not. There's there's nothing about that in there. But there was an effort to militarize, to militarize the ecle ecclesiastical center uh, in order to repel Viking raid. So did monks ever fight back against the Vikings? Uh, in very specific cases, there was an attempt. Were they successful? In general, no, not at all. Uh, as in the case with saint Philbert, they eventually lost control of the island completely. Uh, and that was, you know, almost four decades after the first raid. So that's it for me today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I'll put a link to my article on the island of Normoutier uh, and the Viking invasions of it uh, in, the, in the description of the video. Uh, and of course, as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. And maybe one of your questions will end up in my next video. Have a good day.